session. And we'll talk a little bit more about this, uh, this disc personality type of communication. I am not an expert in this. I'm not trained in this. Like I said, I've taken this test a few times. Uh, so I know my type, but it just continues to fill in that picture of who you are. Okay. So looking at emotional intelligence and then looking at Myers Briggs, you'll do Strengths Finder on your own, but let's do a little bit of DISC. Now, DISC is an acronym. It, it stands for dominance for D, I is influence, S is steadiness, and C is compliance or conscientiousness. I've seen it both ways. And uh, I is usually lowercase. The others are all capital letters, and I'll explain that in just a moment. Uh, D stands for dominance, as you can see here in the upper right corner of the circle. It's direct, decisive, dependent, and to the point. Bottom line and results oriented. This is the leader. This is the manager, right? So this is the person who is on top and wants results done or wants results. Strong-willed, enjoys challenges and immediate results. I is influence. I is optimistic, social, and outgoing. Enjoys being on teams, sharing openly, entertaining, and motivating others. This is the encourager. This is the person who's sometimes will take a back seat just to make sure that people are cohering really well, that people are working, that people are feel comfortable, that uh, social, really helping people just feel appreciated. S is steadiness. Oh, and I is usually lowercase because it's not about you. At least that's what I, when I learned this, it was because it wasn't about you. It was because it was because you're influencing other people. You're helping to build them to be better. S is steadiness. S is team players, cooperative and supportive of others. Again, the encourager, but it's a little bit different. Prefers being in the background, working in a stable environment. So you're not really a person that's the leader who's going to influence from the front. You're really the person who's going to support. Often good listeners prefers to avoid conflict and change. So I'm just not a person that wants to start conflict. I'm not a person that likes to rock the boat, if you've heard that phrase before. That's that steadiness component. And then finally is conscientiousness or compliance. Cautious and concerned, focus on what's correct, doing the right moral thing, planning ahead and being concerned about accuracy. It's about correctness. This is really competence. This is that you are really competent at what you do and that you are uh, getting the results that might be needed. Now, the way this works is when you take your assessment, you're either one of these letters or you're a combination of two. So you could be a DI, you could be an IS, you could be an SC, you could be a CD. And then, or you could just be an S or a D or an I, right? So when you take your assessment, you'll have two letters or at most and one letter. So to put a different way, a little bit, looking at the leading, uh, different meanings again, I mean, dominant emphasis on accomplishing results. It's the bottom line of being very confident, right? But if you're a DI, I is emphasis on influencing and persuading others, being open, focusing on the relationships, really having one-on-one -on -one time with other people. If you're a DI, you're a little bit of both. So you're confident, you're big on getting results, but usually through relationships, right? Or that transparency, that openness that you have. So realize if you can take two letters and merge them together, it's a little bit of each, right? And there's no guarantee that you are, if you're say a D, uh, that you could be a DS and you have S tendencies, but that you're mostly a D, it doesn't matter. It's based on the situation, right? So given a certain situation, you're gonna be one way or leaning the other way. So just realize that it's not an exact science. Okay. Steadiness, emphasis on cooperation, sincerity, and dependability, making sure that you're there, making sure that you're recognized. Again, standing in the back, kind of helping other people grow, that you are there, dependable. Um, I think maybe I mentioned it here before. The best leader is a boring leader. So it's the type of person that says, I'm consistent. I'm not going to be a wild card based on a situation. I'm always going to say the same thing. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to treat people the same way, and hopefully all good. But that boringness, that consistency is really what comes across as being that person's dependable, person's reliable, that person can be trusted. And then finally, conscientiousness to see is this emphasis on quality, again, doing the right thing, competency, expertise, accuracy, correctness, some either moral or not. There's a, a meme going around on Facebook right now saying the enemy uh, said that you're not good enough and you are, this is, this is not for you, that you'll fail. And the joke is at the bottom, and we look back at that enemy and said, yeah, it's your Y-O-U apostrophe R-E, not Y-O-U-R, as, the, as the, the enemy had said. And so that joke right there is that person saying the correct thing, you know, correcting somebody else's grammar, correcting somebody else's uh, facts, correcting whatever it might be. That's that person, that conscientious person. They may not be intentional. It might not be trying to get a zinger on somebody else. It's just trying to be right. There's a focus on being correct. 
Again, dominant people see the big picture. So that's that N that we had in Myers-Briggs, right? That intuitive. They can be blunt. They can ex are willing to accept the challenge. Dominant people are often very competitive. You kind of tell them that this is, you can't do this, or I can outdo you on whatever. And usually the response is you're on. They get straight to the point. Usually very few words, usually very few comments. It just is what it is. They can get angry quickly, especially when they are uh, told that they are wrong or there's a counter argument or something. Some of you may know people like this when, talk, when talking about politics. Right? So it's kind of like, this is my opinion. This is it. Here's where it is. You know, if you disagree with me, well, you're wrong. Right. And it may not be that stubborn, but it's just that very direct communication style. It's just very simple and straightforward. This is it. It could be a very positive thing, too. If you think of a leader that's trying to build vision, here's my vision. Here's where I see the company going in five years. Right. Or it could also be contrary. So, again, the meme that says, um, convince me otherwise. Right. So, um, Hot chocolate is better than pumpkin spice. Convince me otherwise. Or tell me that I'm wrong. That's very much the dominant person kind of boom. It's just in your face. The influencer is the enthusiastic person. They usually see the bright side of things. The glass is always full uh, instead of the glass is always or half full instead of half empty. They like to work together. They like people. They enjoy relationships. They're very trusting. They want to be trusting. They want to enjoy other people and be around other people and get all those different diverse opinions. They hate being ignored. Right. So that person, it's all about the value of the relationship. I would go as far as to say that with the influencer and the steadfast person, it's more about the relationship than the results. So it's okay to fail the project as long as you fail it together and you grew and you grew personally and grew together because of that. So influencers are very much, well, just that they're influencers. They like people. It's about the relationship. Steadiness is the loyal person. It's the person that stands in the background. They like to be supportive. They're very humble. That's the support person. Um, yeah, you may, be, you may know this with friends. You may have certain friends who are just a very dominant and they're very personality um, full. And they kind of take up the room when they walk into a room. They, they're the center of attention. But the other person, the steadiness person is the person who's the support person. Right. So they kind of make sure that little details are taken care of. They may be big picture too. They like in complimenting and encouraging. They like helping out. Uh, very calm in manner, very calm in how they approach people, how they approach a problem. Um, yeah. Right. It's just very, they don't like to be rushed. Right. So it's just very steadfast and very consistent. And again, likes being in the background. So it's not somebody who likes to be the center of attention, but they're dependable and reliable in that regard. Conscientiousness people, uh, this is process and detail oriented. This is enjoying independence. So doing it on your own, even better if you can do something on your own that you've done before. Objective reasoning. So very logical, uh, very straightforward in that regard. Fears being wrong. Now you can imagine what a DC looks like. So somebody who's dominant doesn't say much, but they want to have the right answer. They want to do the right thing. They're very S oriented, but also N oriented where it's kind of a balance. I can see the big picture, but I can also see the small details, right? So again, the big one there is fear of being wrong. I don't want to be known as being wrong. My, my word is my bond. I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do, right? So that very objective, very logical background perspective. And for some reason, I keep misspelling conscientiousness. So I forgive, forgive you for that. All right. So now's your turn. So I'm going to let you guys go off on your own. We're not going to do it right now, but sometime between now and Friday, if you wouldn't mind going on, you get the same link is on Moodle. You can go in and answer 12 questions, which is multiple choice. And they're all the, in this situation, I am most likely to, and in this situation, I'm least likely to. And you can see from the picture that it's kind of this broad mm, circle, almost a, like a parabola that's in the graph. Your personality communication style kind of encompasses two different letters at most or encompasses one letter. Don't be surprised if it's two letters and don't think that you're going to have all four. There are times where you will be very dominant if you're not normally. There are times where you'll be very conscientious and making sure that you have the right thing. If you're taking an exam, taking an exam with me or somebody else, you want to have the right answer, right? Conscientiousness makes sense. So I want to do the right thing. I want to, I want to do things the right way. You might normally be an influencer. Think about how you are with your friends, right? And how that works. Uh, yeah. So 
Here are some examples of the con letters together. So again, it's it's kind of what we had before, what I just mentioned, but it's similar, but a little different. So DC, this is the person who's very dominant and also very conscientious, right? So they, they have the challenge, they want the results, the accuracy. And I love this because I found this on another disk assessment website. It talks about not only what your goals are and what your fears are, but it also tells you what your leadership qualities are like. So for every one of these combinations, these 12 styles, you can see here's what people found important and here's what they're afraid of. Usually if you press a fear button, probably common sense, right? People get very defensive. And so know if somebody starts getting defensive for some reason, you can kind of figure out what their communication style is like, which is their personality, right? So that helps, especially when you're talking with somebody, you're negotiating something, you have to work with somebody new that you've never worked with before. DC, again, very dominant, but also very conscientious, getting the job done, being right, but being very direct and very forward. They like the challenge, they're very results oriented, results oriented and they like the accuracy. Their goals are being inter independent, personal accomplishment, personal achievement is very important. Fears of failure to achieve their own standards. So failing, like not having, not having the image in your head and not living up to the image in your head. Leadership quality, setting high expectations, it's a perfectionist. Speaking up about problems, hey, let me tell you what's on my mind right now. That's very much the DC combination. Now a straight D is that dominant person is very similar results. They're very action oriented. They like challenges, bottom line results and victory. Like it's about winning. It's not necessarily about personal accomplishment as it is just about winning and being the victor. Fear is being taken advantage of or looking weak. Now you may, even if you're not a D, you may have seen that before. I don't want to be considered weak. I don't want to cry. I don't want to show I'm frustrated. I don't want to whine because that comes across as being irritating or being weak. So that you might be a D in that regard. Leadership quality, showing confidence, taking charge, focusing on results. Again, very results driven. And what's interesting is as we start talking next week about Enneagrams, Enneagrams are numbers. So you're a one through nine. And we'll talk about that when we get into detail when we have that class. But you'll see some of these similar characteristics show here. So if you're a D, you're probably going to be an eight as well. And you'll see what eight means when we get to that point. But a lot of the similarities between this personality test and Enneagrams. So D is that dominant DI, so a dominant and an influencer. It's action results, uh, action based and results oriented, but it's also enthusiasm because you value people, right? But you still prefer that D, you still are that dominant role, right? So to get, getting, winning, having victory, but with people, quick action, goals, new opportunities, new working environments with new people, there's a fear of losing power. And there's also, I would argue, being a fear of being uh, found out. So imposter syndrome showing up that I'm not who I think I am. And it's that idea of similar to like not meeting my own standards that we found in DC. Leadership quality, stretching the boundaries, finding opportunities. It's about knowing people, but not as much about the people as it is making the results. Right? So those are our D's. Our eyes, again, I influencer from the middle, enthusiasm, action, collaboration. It's about working with people. It's about the relationships. Goals, popularity. Do you like being the popular person? Or don't you care about being popular? Um, I'm an I. I'm, I'm an IS, so I'm the, the bottom one on the screen. And I remember having a conversation with my wife uh, being when we first were married. She was struggling with a person at her job. And I remember saying, you're going you're gonna to do a great job. Your, your, your presentation is going to be great. You're going to do a great job. She's like, well, I want to make sure that it's right. I want to make sure that I have the right information going across. And I said, well, people like you. And she responded, what does that matter? I don't care if people like me. I just want to make sure that I'm right. That's what this is. That's the influencer. It's the popularity person. Like people like you. You're, you're funny. You smile well. You come across well. You're extroverted. People like you. That's very much an I thing. And as you do Enneagrams, you'll find that's a number two, very much a, a people person. So popularity, approval, approval is a big thing. If you don't get approval, that's a hard thing to deal with, that form of rejection. Excitement, right? So environment, environmental excitement, things are doing well. I enjoy my environment. I enjoy people. I enjoy just, we're going to do this. We're optimistic. Things are going to happen. Again, fears, rejection, and not being heard. So kind of being dismissed. Leadership quality, showing enthusiasm, building professional networks, building your network and working with other people. It could be training people. It could be helping other people out. Um, it's people, people, people. 
ID, so it's kind of like D, uh, but ID is a big one. So the influencer plus the, the dominance together, action results driven enthusiasm. So still people, but results driven. Goals are exciting breakthroughs. Fears are mixed in, fixed environments. So not having that innovation, loss of approval or attention. So maybe because I didn't get my results or I didn't make the organization succeed, people think less of me. That's a concern, somebody who's an ID. Finally, leadership qualities are finding opportunities or promoting bold action and helping people there, right? Looking for new ways to get results, looking for new innovations, and then doing things that are risky, right? And part of that is favoring people. People will say, wow, that's a risky person. I want to be more like that, right? Because that influence is there, again, about relationships. IS is that steadfastness and influence, collaboration, enthusiasm, the support that you have, again, working with people, but also that steadfastness, that you're dependable, you're reliable. So goals are friendship, putting the relationship first before the project. Fears are pressuring other people or being disliked. Go back to that popularity. Mm, people aren't going to like me. Leadership qualities are being approachable and acknowledging contributions. So people want to come up to me, hey, I'm a good listener. I love being around people. And then acknowledging those contributions that look at these things that I did. Look at these results that we've had, even though it's not dominant, right? But look at the, the uh, amount of help that I've offered other people. Look at the amount of people that I've grown, right? So keeping that list of things that you've done very well. Do any of these sound familiar to you? I mean, any of these that we've covered before, if they do, chances are, if you take the assessment, you will find you're somewhere similar to that style. SI is that steadfastness. So this is we're focusing on the steadfastness, that steadiness. SI against collaboration, support, and enthusiasm, similar to the last time, but it's more S than it is I. So not about the relationships as much. Acceptance is big. Being close, close relationships are big. Being forced to pressure others is a fear. Facing aggression is a fear. Rocking the boat, causing problems. So I still like people, but I don't want to do the wrong things that can hurt other people psychologically, emotionally, or otherwise. Leadership qualities, I want to create a positive and safe environment where you can say anything, where you can do anything. Acknowledging contributions. It's contributions are important to me as an I. Therefore, I want to acknowledge your contributions. Again, that support person that stands in the background. I want to encourage you. I want to make you feel better. <clears throat> Up here, S is support, stability, and collaboration, working with others. Goals are harmony and stability. Fears are letting people down in rapid change. Really, it's anything in a culture that can cause problems. It's that feeling of, well, causing change, or rocking the boat, making people feel underappreciated. Right? That harmony and stability is a golden moment. I love that everybody feels that they're valued. I love that everybody has good ideas and that we're actually using those ideas, et cetera. Leadership qualities, staying open to input. I want to hear what everybody has to say. And then showing diplomacy. So back uh, last week or the week before, buy-in leads to weigh-in. And seeing and listening to everybody's perspective, balanced processing, and moving ahead. Now that everybody has said something, everyone has given an opinion, I want to choose one of these and then move forward. Even if you were, your idea wasn't chosen, it was a good idea. It was something that was acknowledged. So that leadership style. The downside is sometimes it takes a while to get everyone's input, right? And you feel awkward not having everyone's input. So think about times where you've gone out to a park or you've gone to a movies, or you've gone to a restaurant or something, and not everybody has agreed or put in their, their two cents on what we should be doing what we're going to go see or who's paying for what or who's driving you know, all that, that you kind of feel hung up because not everybody is putting in that response. And that's what that steadfast people are like. SC is steadfast and conscientiousness, stability, support, accuracy, being right, but also being supportive, right? And having that stability, being dependable. Goals are calm environments. So lack of change, fixed objectives and steady progress. We're doing well. People are happy. Etc. Fears are pressuring people. It's similar to that steadfast again, letting people down, that uncertainty, that chaos, that ambiguity. I don't like having that because it means that I can't be reliable. I can't be dependable. I can't be consistent. And yet tied with that is being right and doing the right thing. Leadership qualities are maintaining composure and being fair-minded, getting everyone's input. Finally, C is conscientiousness. So the last one, C is, is stability, 
um, and accuracy and support for conscientiousness and steadfast. We saw the reverse of this SC just a moment ago. Goals are stability, reliable outcomes. Again, I want to be reliable. I want to be supportive. I want to be dependable. Yet I want to have collaboration. I want to help other people. Emotionally, <clears throat> excuse me, emotionally charged situations are terrible. And so is ambiguity. Again, there's that uncertainty and there's conflict in that. Leadership qualities are showing modesty and being fair-minded. So helping other people out and, and just being kind with one another, right? Not making those assumptions, having that humility. C is conscientiousness by itself, accuracy, stability, and challenge. So liking to be challenged, much like dominant, but not the same way. It's about personal achievement. Goals are accuracy and objective processes, logic. Fears being wrong, strong displays of emotion. So I still want to be logical. I still want to be helpful. I want to help people grow. But it's not necessarily about the people. It's just doing the right thing or being right. I want to spread correctness, if you will. Make sure people are good writers in my group or make sure that people are good presenters in my group because there's a way to do it. And we need to get make sure everybody has that way. Leadership qualities are communicating with clarity instead of certainty and then promoting disciplined analysis. So understanding, thinking, if I failed, why did I fail? What would I do different next time? And helping people that way or helping yourself that way. The last one is CD, where it's conscientiousness before um, D, which is dominance. It's challenge, accuracy, and results. Again, very results-driven and being right. So goals are efficient results, rational decisions. These are people that like to see the data. Let's make the decision based on the data. Fears are failure and lack of control. So similar to what we saw in CS, um, that ambiguity, that chaos, the struggle that's there, we don't want to have that. Finally, leadership qualities are creating high standards and improving methods. Again, very logical. Based on this, let's take the emotional part out of it. How do we succeed and grow that way? So that's about a half hour of conversation right now on DISC. My advice to you is to go try it. Take it and see what you come up with. So the, the assessment that's there, I, I did this one just about, I don't know, an hour ago. And I thought, well, let me just see what comes up. And sure enough, mine is IS. And it came up the same way again. So I encourage you to give it a try and see what you come up with. Um, it will help you understand a little bit more about who you are. It'll help you rationalize a little bit more when you do StrengthsFinder. Um, I have links that I need to send you with codes so you can take your StrengthsFinder assessments. Um, hopefully you guys are doing really well. Um, and, and my goal is to send those out to you by Friday. You have an exam that you were supposed to do right now. So, um, well, I think that's due on Friday evening at 11.55 p.m. You also have a discussion forum that's also available. Your first post, your initial post is due tonight at 11.55 p.m. Your two response posts are due on Friday. There is no quiz this week. So that's all I have for you today. I thought I'd, instead of getting down to the nitty gritty and some of the details, I thought I would just kind of give you a high level version of it, but also see there's different personality types and how they combine and how they share and things like that. So uh, yes, the multiple choice answers, you can highlight your questions. That's fine. You don't have to put the letter in. Also, I've had people highlight the questions they don't want in red so that I know, you don't, I don't, I shouldn't look at those. I shouldn't grade them. Um, same thing with essays, right? And even if essays, you just put in the appropriate number, 28 or 29. I kind of get the feel for which one that you want. Uh, so I think that's all I've got. So I'm going to stop the recording.